Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant's Tech Talk. Every once in a while, a new library is released on Python that has the potential to change the scenario for machine learning and deep learning. And PyTorch is one of those libraries. Maintained and released by Facebook back in 2016, PyTorch is by far one of the most popular machine learning and deep learning libraries. And if you can't guess by the name, PyTorch is leaning towards Python as its primary programming language. Companies like Facebook, Lockheed Martin, Nike, and JP Morgan use PyTorch to build machine learning models and conduct machine learning research. There are reportedly over 12,000 companies recorded using PyTorch, with an annual growth of over 35%. PyTorch is relatively easier to learn compared to other deep learning frameworks, and that's because its syntax and application are similar to other conventional programming languages like Python. It has a simple Python interface and provides a simple yet powerful API. PyTorch can also easily be implemented on both Windows and Linux. This Python library is also well recognized by major cloud platforms. So this allows developers and researchers to do large scale training jobs on GPUs with PyTorch. In today's video, we're gonna have a look at the advantages and technicalities of PyTorch, as well as a look at PyTorch 1.9. As always, if you find this topic interesting, then you can let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. You can also let us know if you find it interesting by leaving a comment telling us so in the comments section down below. Now let's jump into it. So let's start with the advantages of PyTorch. PyTorch is a popular library of Python developed to provide flexibility as a deep learning development platform. PyTorch's workflow is similar to that of Python's scientific computing library, NumPy. But the question is, why would you use PyTorch to build deep learning models? Well, here are a few things that might help answer that question. Simplicity. PyTorch is simple, easy to learn and extend, and has easy debugging methods. Easy to use API. PyTorch's API is as simple as Python's. Also, PyTorch's documentation is exceptional and helpful for beginners. It stands out in terms of usability because of better design to object-oriented classes that envelop all the useful data choices, along with the choice of the model architecture. Python support. This library easily integrates with the PyCon ecosystem. In fact, it's so similar to NumPy that you wouldn't even be able to notice the difference. Powerful computation graphs. Instead of predefined computational graphs with particular functions, PyTorch gives us the framework to build computational graphs as we go and even modify them. This is very important for settings where we don't know the amount of memory required for building a neural network. The other benefits of using PyTorch include custom data loaders, simplified preprocessors, and multi-GPU support. So now let's dive into the technicalities of PyTorch. Before diving too deep into the technicalities, let's go through the workflow of PyTorch. It uses an imperative paradigm, and this means that each line of code needed to build a graph indicates a component of that graph. Developers can separately perform computations on these components even before the graph is developed, and this technique is called define by run. You can install PyTorch pretty easily by following the official documentation steps that we will include in the description down below, and then running commands according to your system specifications. So the major elements that we're going to learn when starting with PyTorch are the PyTorch tensors, mathematical operations, autograd module, optin module, and neural network module. So let's have a look at each one of these elements starting with the PyTorch tensors. Tensors are nothing but multi-dimensional arrays. PyTorch tensors are similar to NumPy's ND arrays, with the only added feature being that tensors can also be used on a GPU. Mathematical operations. With PyTorch, you can use more than 200 mathematical operations and implement them efficiently. You can also perform matrix operations on the PyTorch tensors you define. Autograd module. PyTorch uses a method known as automatic differentiation. Here, a recorder records the operations that we performed and replays them backward for computing gradients. This methodology is crucial when developing neural networks since it saves time on one epoch by computing differentiation of the parameters at the forward pass itself. Optim module. The optim module is a module that executes different optimization algorithms used for developing neural networks. 
It supports the most commonly used methods so that you don't have to build them from scratch. NN modules. PyTorch Autograd makes it easy for us to define computational graphs and take gradients. But when it comes to defining complex neural networks, raw Autograd becomes a bit too low level. This is where the NN module comes into the picture. The NN package consists of a set of modules that we can consider a neural network layer that gives an output from input and some trainable weights. Now let's have a look at the new PyTorch 1.9 rollout. Python has become one of the most important Python libraries for artificial intelligence and machine learning researchers. PyTorch for Deep Learning now has enterprise support on Microsoft's Azure. Since Facebook first launched PyTorch, it has become the standard for all of its AI workloads. PyTorch and TensorFlow are compatible with NumPy and other Python libraries, as well as machine learning jobs that require faster GPU processing. Torch is a linear algebra module of PyTorch. According to PyTorch's release notes, linear algebra has been upgraded to stable in version 1.9, and this gives NumPy users a friendly add-on feature for working with algebra and math. The new version extends PyTorch's support for it with implementation of every function from NumPy's linear algebra module. It also provides support for accelerators and autograde. The complex autograde functionality, which enables people to commute complex gradients and optimize real valued loss functions with complex variables, is also on the product update. This new update has torch.use deterministic algorithm options that include a few debugging methods. Enabling these leads to operations acting deterministically. Otherwise, their non-deterministic behavior would cause a runtime error. And then on the other hand, the torch.special module, which is comparable to SciPy's special module, is now available in beta version. Along with the stable release of the freezing API, the beta version of the PyTorch profiler, the interface mode API, and the torch.package, this new version of PyTorch includes a new way to package all PyTorch models. So there we have it. We've looked at PyTorch from the advantages, the technicalities, and the rollout of PyTorch 1.9. Once again, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.